Hey folks, welcome back to The Shop. Frank here. Now today we're going to talk about three things that you absolutely must pre-plan for if you're considering purchasing a CNC plasma table. There is infrastructure that's required to operate a plasma table besides the actual plasma table itself. And there's a lot of places that you can buy a CNC machine, regardless of what you buy, what machine you buy, or even if you build your own. And there's not that difficult to do that either. Uh, and there's lots of videos on YouTube about how to do that. But there are three absolutely critical infrastructure items that you need to plan for uh, if you're going to go down the path of running a CNC plasma table. The cost of building the infrastructure out to support running a CNC plasma table can easily cost as much as the plasma table itself. So people going into purchasing a commercial CNC plasma table need to understand that there's other items that are necessary to operate it and can easily underestimate the overall cost of putting a system together. While uh, some plasma tables are, you know, down in the $2,000 range, uh, commercially available, uh, you know, many of them go up to well, much higher than that, $50,000 or even more, depending on the size that you purchase. Uh, there are some hobbyist size plasma tables that are available for you know, under $2,000 or just over $2,000. And if you're just considering getting into it as a hobbyist, as I suspect, you know, many of you probably are, if you don't take into account the additional equipment and facility you need to operate a CNC plasma table, you can get very frustrated or even hurt yourself and make the whole experience really uh, an unhappy one. There are many examples on the vendor forums of people very frustrated with operating their tables and usually it's due to a failure to address the three critical infrastructure items that you need to plan for should you decide to purchase a CNC plasma table. So this is my Crossfire Pro from Langmire Systems. This is their I would say a hobbyist size plasma table. It has a roughly four foot by three foot cutting envelope and it will handle, I, I buy my sheets of steel in four by four foot pieces and so this is a four by four piece, half of a four by eight sheet and it sticks out over the back and you could, if you have it set up properly, take an eight foot sheet and slide it on here and move it along as you, as you cut pieces out of it. This is not an ad for Langmire Systems or their plasma tables, though I will say I've had this for two and a half years and I've been very happy with it. I built a table that has casters on it that the feet of the plasma table sits on. So the whole machine is on casters which allows me to move it around if I need to. And it gives me a place to store the, some of the support equipment. I have a storage tank for the water that goes in the table. And then it's a, it's a garden sprayer tank, ATV sprayer tank. I think it's a 20 gallon tank. It comes with a pump. I have a 12 volt battery and a switch and I can pump water up into the table and then the table has drains which drain back down to the tank. So that may be something you want to think about so that you don't have to leave the table full of water at all times. The other thing I, you know, things I have under here are lifting equipment. Some, uh, I have a plate dog and I'll show you why and a desiccant dryer and I'll talk about that. All right, the first thing you need to plan for is an adequate air system. Plasma torches require high pressure compressed air that is very dry. You need to check the specs for your particular torch for your plasma table and determine what the 
SCFM, the standard cubic feet per minute, and pressure requirements are. My table requires uh, six to eight SCFM at 90 PSI. Now I had a three horsepower compressor that I've had for many years, a 220 volt three horsepower compressor with a 30 gallon tank. And it claimed to put out eight SCFM at 90 PSI. That, so that's marginal. And I don't think it would be adequate given uh, the needs of the table. If you don't have enough air, the compressor will run and the air pressure will drop and the plasma torch will not operate correctly. If it's not dry air, and I mean really dry air, then the consumables for the torch will be destroyed very quickly and you'll be very frustrated. You'll be changing consumables out. You may not even finish a, a cut of a project if you're cutting out a sign or something. So dry, high volume air is a necessity. So what do I mean by dry and high volume and how do you get there? All right, so let's look at three things. The air compressor, a condenser, and a desiccant dryer or a refrigerated air dryer. All right, in my shop, I have a five horsepower, 60 gallon air compressor and it delivers 15 SCFM at 90 PSI. I set the tank pressure switch to 125 pounds, so I certainly have, with this air compressor, adequate volume of air. But volume isn't the only thing you need. You need dry air. How do you get dry air? Well, if you live in the southwest desert, then your air is already pretty dry. But even in that case, when you compress it, you are consolidating what moisture is in the air. And at 90 PSI, whatever moisture was in the air, if it's very low humidity at atmospheric pressure at 90 PSI, it's got five times the amount of moisture that it did at normal atmospheric pressure. So even compressed air in the desert southwest warrants some form of condenser unit or air dryer. So how do you get dry air? This is a condenser unit that's built from a hydraulic cooler. It has a fan on the front of it that operates when the compressor is running. So air comes from the compressor through a hydraulic high pressure hydraulic line to this radiator the fan runs and then it comes out at the bottom through a moisture separator and then it goes to the tank in this condenser unit we've actually plumbed it in between the compressor and the tank so this is where most of the moisture is captured in this moisture separator. As you know, an air compressor, when it runs, heats the air, and when you cool it, the hot air can't hold as much moisture anymore, so you get moisture condensing out, so hence the name condenser. Another option besides purchasing or assembling a condenser unit like this is to run copper lines in uh, an array of uh, U-bends and mount that on the wall. You don't really need a fan necessarily, depending on the type of array you, have, you've, you build, but you do need to allow for drain, drainage of moisture and a moisture separator on the output of your cooler assembly. The second component in the air drying setup is a refrigerated air dryer. So this is a refrigerated air dryer purchased from Northern Tool. Uh, you can get them from Harbor Freight, other places. And it is basically an air conditioner that condenses moisture out of the air as it's running. 
So air comes into the machine here, goes through a cooling coil, and the output has another moisture separator on it right here. Get, actually, I get very little, very little moisture coming out of that moisture separator because the air that goes into this unit has already been dried with the condenser. So that's step two. So air comes from the compressor up to the condenser back to the tank. And then it comes out of the tank through another moisture separator here. This set of filters was actually a moisture separator, lubricator, and a, and a desiccant. I, both of these are empty. The only thing I'm using is the moisture separator here. Then from here it goes into the refrigerated air dryer. As it leaves the air dryer, it goes into my air system in my shop. The next stop for the plasma table for air coming out of this refrigerated air dryer is a desiccant dryer at the plasma table. This is the air dryer. As you can see, it's a Cam Air CT30. It is a 10 pound desiccant tank, and the air go goes into this tank through a desiccant package that's encased in a cloth filter bag. So not only does it remove moisture from the air, it removes particulates. You want the air going into your plasma torch to be clean, dry, and with adequate flow. All right, so to recap, you need an adequate air system. That includes a air compressor with adequate volume, the condenser, which takes out most of the moisture. The second thing is a refrigerated air dryer. And the last stage, right before the torch, is a desiccant dryer. So those four things, compressor, condenser, air dryer, and desiccant dryer. All right, the second most important thing is material handling. How are you going to get your material? How are you going to receive it? Where are you going to order it from? How are you going to receive it? How are you going to store it? And how are you going to get it on and off of the plasma table? Now, if you're just cutting signs and you're dealing with thin sheet metal, you know, 16 gauge sheet metal, or thinner, then those sheets um, can be handled, you know, pretty easily. If you buy a hobby size table, you're going to buy smaller pieces. That also makes it easier to handle. If you're buying a five by 10 foot kind of a production table, then you need to anticipate handling the sheet metal in those sizes to fit on the table. I buy my sheets in four by four foot pieces. I tell the supplier to shear whatever I want. In, it comes in four by eight sheets, most of it. Shear them in half. So I get four by four foot pieces. Now anything under uh, 11 gauge or eighth of an inch, I can handle. I can pick it up and I can throw it up on the table. It's not a problem, but anything, anything thicker, 3 sixteenths, a piece of 3 sixteenths weighs 125 pounds, a piece of quarter inch weighs um, 175 pounds, something like that. A piece of 3 eighths inch plate steel weighs 250 pounds, four by four foot piece. So there's no way I can you know, pick up and handle a four by four foot sheet of that material. So you need to plan for handling the material you expect to use. Many people have a shop large enough to accommodate a forklift and they have a forklift or I suppose even like a pallet stacker would be an inexpensive way to pick up sheets of, of metal uh, and handle them and get them on the plasma table. So that's one option. 
I'll show you what I've done, and I have a, uh, I have a good sized shop, but it is a combination woodworking and metalworking shop. I don't have room to bring a forklift in here. I mean, I probably could move, move a table out of the way and use a pallet stacker, but that creates a second problem, and that's storage. Storing pieces of sheet metal, you can store it outside, but it's going to rust. So you need to decide if you're willing to accept rusted metal, working with rusted metal, or whether you want to store it inside. The most economical and space-saving way to store sheet metal for the plasma table, I found, is a storage rack that stores the sheets vertical. So here's my rack. I think I purchased this at Northern Tool or Harbor Freight. They sell the same rack. I added some vertical braces to keep the sheets from falling over, but the rack will hold over a thousand pounds. I've had 1,200 pounds of steel in it. Right now I've got three-eighths, three-eighths, quarter, three-sixteenths, three-eighths, eighth-inch, quarter, um, 16 gauge. So I typically keep a supply of various sizes on hand for my projects and uh, storing it this way it takes up minimal floor space and every sheet is individually accessible. You might be wondering how I get the material, the heavier sheets from this rack onto my table and there's a pretty easy way to do that that I figured out. All right, so here's my secret weapon. This is a little jib crane. And it is has an electrically operated hoist on it. And it has a load rating of 500 pounds. It has a base which bolts to the floor with a couple of anchors. And a crane like this, they sell them at Northern Tool. Uh, and you can get them different places, but, and a lot of manufacturers. It's not a crazy cost. Here I have a lifting magnet. And here is a plate dog. So normally I'll pull that rack around here, put the plate dog on the hoist, pull it, lift it in the rack with the plate dog, move the rack back out of the way, lay it down on the floor, and then pick it up with the magnet and swing it around and set it on the table. Now I will tell you that this particular davit came with a arm that fit in three different spaces here to change the angle of the boom. I put a uh, trailer jack in its place so that I can adjust the angle of the boom. You need it at a high angle in order to clear the rack and you want it at a low angle to get maximum reach to get the plate over the over the table and set it down. And it stores out of the way like that. So that's my solution for material handling. You do want to consider where you, your supplier, how they're going to be delivered. Do you want 4x8 four sheets or 4x4 four four sheets or 2x4 sheets depending on the size of your plasma table and how you're going to get them off the truck and into your shop and into storage. If you store them flat, you still need a way to get them off the truck. If they're thin sheets, you can pull them off and manhandle them. If they're thicker sheets, uh, you need a way to get them off the truck. You either need a forklift or you need, uh, what I've used is my front end loader. I have a Kubota front end loader. I rig a strap, lifting strap with my magnetic lifter and I can lift a sheet 
of metal off the truck with the magnetic lifter and set it on the ground or bring it in here and lay it on the floor, come through the door and lay it on the floor and go get another sheet off the truck. And I did that for a while uh, and it works fine. It's a little slow, but it works fine. Then once I do that, I pick them up with the plate dog and put them in the rack. So my process is magnetic lifter off the truck, laying flat on the floor in the shop, then picked up with the plate dog with the crane and placed vertically in the storage rack. And then when I go to use it, pick them out of the storage rack with the plate dog, lay them flat on the floor, pick them up with the magnetic lifter, swing them around and lay them on the table. So I've handled up to three eighths inch sheets, which weigh 250 pounds uh, with no problem that way and um, have had no issues. So handling the material and planning on how you're going to handle the material can be an issue uh, if your material is thicker than an eighth of an inch, you need to make arrangements to handle the, the plate steel. So that's the number two infrastructure that you need to plan for if you're going to get a CNC plasma table and cut anything thicker than an eighth of an inch. Now the cost for the crane, it's um, just under $2,000 with the electric hoist and about $1,000 with a hand crank hoist, which you certainly could use, though the electric hoist is a lot more convenient with a wired remote. You can step back so you're not underneath the metal when it's hanging. You don't want it to, uh, <laughs> to injure yourself. Be careful about that. I wear steel-toed shoes when I'm handling metal. Uh, just in case. I've never had anything drop or fall, um, but it's, I, I suppose it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of, of when something like that happens. So always be safe, keep your feet out of the way, <laughs> don't put it under where the metal's being lifted. Uh, 250 pounds of sh steel, drop it on your toes is, uh, can leave a mark. So, all right. So that's number two, material handling. Figure that out uh, ahead of time. Okay, number three, the third item that almost nobody thinks about ahead of time purchasing a plasma table is consumables. Now consumables are torch, nozzles, and electrodes. So these are, this is a pack of nozzles, this is a pack of electrodes. And this has five nozzles in it, and these are purchased for the razor weld uh, torch, which is what I have, the razor weld cut 45, and then electrodes. So you need, each time you change, you need to replace a nozzle and an electrode. Alright, so there's a nozzle and there's an electrode. You get them to focus. Alright, so the nozzles wear out the holes get eroded and get too big and the electrode gets eroded on the tip. So they fit together like this inside the torch and they need to be replaced on a regular basis. How often you need to replace them depends on what you're cutting and the type of cutting that you're doing. Pierces through heavy or thick metal uh, cause more erosion than pierces through thin metal and if you're not doing a lot of pierces the nozzles will last longer. So 
with my air system that I have here, I have very dry air coming to the torch. These nozzle, a nozzle assembly will last me about 30 minutes of cut time. Oh, here's my, one of my two German Shepherds just come in. Here. And here's the other one coming. Uh, those of you guys that watch my channel are familiar with my two German Shepherds, Butchie and, and Brutus. So, let's see if we can get them on camera here. All right, come here, guys. This is Butchie. This is Brutus. They're fabulous dogs. Fabulous dogs. All right. My good boys. My good boys. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you need to plan for consumables. Now, if you buy retail packaging like that, the consumables are $6 per electrode and $6 per nozzle. So $12 to change out the nozzle and the electrode every 30 minutes of use. So uh, you need to plan for that. And if your air is not very dry, then your usage will go way up. And in fact, if you don't have a good condenser and some sort of a dryer arrangement, then you're gonna be super frustrated because your nozzles are gonna wear out in just a couple minutes. You'll blow them, up, blow them right out. Moisture in the air getting to the nozzle when it hits the plasma just erodes the nozzle very quickly. You can buy nozzles and electrodes in bulk from other suppliers. And I have done that. And the cost is much less. And I got my Brutus here with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I just ordered another pack of 20 electrodes and 20 nozzles for um, 60, $60, I think, from Amazon. So there's a lot of suppliers on Amazon that sell uh, aftermarket uh, nozzles and electrodes in bulk packs. Now. Are they the same? Are they as good as the retail razor weld nozzles and electrodes? I have to say, I don't notice a big difference. It's not like the razor weld retail ones last twice as long. They may last a few minutes longer, but to be honest with you, I don't really notice a significant difference. So my recommendation would be, yeah, buy, buy your first few sets from the manufacturer of your torch or the vendor that sold you the torch and pay a little bit more to get the, them at first so that you know what you're dealing with. And uh, after you gain some experience, look around for some secondary market supplier I mean, most of these come from China. I mean, the ones you buy retail from the vendor are gonna come from China too. So I don't know there's any difference, but you'll have to make that judgment on your own depending on your own circumstances and your setup. All right, so those are the three big things you need to plan for ahead of time. One is the air system. Two is material handling. Figure out how you're gonna do that. And three, plan for consumables. All right, so I'll give you a couple of honorable mention items just because you need to think about these. The table takes water, about this table takes 15 gallons of water. So you need to figure out how to get water in the table and keep it in the table. The table doesn't leak, but it does evaporate. The water does evaporate. As you're using the table, it creates steam and you need to have ventilation to get the steam out of the room and you need to be able to replace water that evaporates. So you need a water source. Now I haven't found a need 
to drain, to change the water in bulk. Now, because I use an additive and I drain it back to the tank and refill the table, I don't have a lot of evaporation between uses, so it can go unused for a month or two and I don't lose water because it's in a tank. But I do add water with a bucket. I have a spigot outside, so for me, adding a, cup, a gallon or two of water each time, um, you know, each time I use the table is not a big deal. I, I add uh, an additive, an anti-corrosion additive to my table. Now, a lot of tables you'll see are full of rust. I have no rust here because I use this additive. It's called Plasma Green 1050, and there's other brands, a similar, I'm sure. One gallon, I add one gallon to, of the additive to 15 gallons of water. And that additive seems to last forever. I mean, it lasts a long time. You, water evaporates, so you need to make up the water, but the additive doesn't evaporate, so it stays there. So all I have to do is add clean water, um, a gallon or two at a time, just to keep the table full. So you need to plan for water. And the additive is non-toxic and biodegradable, so it's not a hazard. Uh, honorable mention number two is power. You need a 30 amp, 240 volt outlet for your plasma torch. I don't think there's any that that will run on a 110 circuit. So you need a 30 amp, dedicated 30 amp, 240 volt circuit for your plasma torch. The third honorable mention is software. You need to decide what software you're going to use depending on your business or hobby aspirations, there are different kinds of software available. I use Fusion 360 for modeling parts. It is way overkill for most work for a plasma table and some vendors of plasma tables will have software available. But Fusion 360 is a free download for non-commercial use. And that's what I've done and it will uh, my thought is it's a very capable software that as my needs grow over time, then I'll be able to continue to use the software. So my learning how to use it to cut out pieces on the CNC plasma table is an investment in a larger uh, potential learning endeavor. So I use the free 360, Fusion 360 download uh, there are other products available on the market, some low cost, sheet cam and, and, and others, and I don't know all of them, um, but there are many people that use sheet cam. So you need to figure out what software you want to use, and you can use a vendor's recommended software, or you can use other commercially available software. So that's honorable mention number three. Okay, so to recap, Three big things you need to plan for. One is an air system, and that can cost you a couple thousand dollars or more. You need material handling capability, and again, uh, a couple thousand dollars for a rudimentary setup like I have here with a little jib crane. Or if your shop has a crane or you have a forklift, then you've perhaps largely resolved that issue, but if you're in a small shop or a garage shop and you're a hobbyist, you need to think about that. The third thing is plan for consumables and changing them out on a regular basis. Uh, and the better your air system is, the longer your consumables will last. And then what do I have? Three honorable mentions. A good power supply, a dedicated 30 amp, 240 volt circuit, a water supply for makeup to the table, and you can extend your, the life of your water by using an additive and draining it to a storage tank in between uses. And then the third one is software. Three major items to think about and then three honorable mentions. All right. If you're looking for a plasma table, I'm not advertising the Langmeyer systems. I'm, there's no sponsorship or anything. There are other people on YouTube that have sponsorships for these machines. Um, 
I've been happy with this one. I've had it, like I said, two, a little over two years, cut a lot of metal with it, um, and it's never let me down. So I've been happy with it. I have a Razor Weld 45 plasma torch and a machine torch as opposed to the handheld torch. And these tables come set up with the capability to hold a hand torch. But if you buy a machine torch, which is a couple hundred dollars more, um, I think it gives you, you know, a better setup. So that's up to you. The Razor Weld 45 that came with the table or I bought with the table was reasonably priced. Um, and I've had zero issues with it. It's run flawlessly. So I can cut uh, up to half inch thick mild steel on the table. I have cut half inch thick. Uh, half inch cuts at 17 inches a minute. Three eighths cuts at 27 inches a minute. Quarter cuts at 40 inches a minute. Um, and it goes, you know, the thinner the metal, the faster the cut rate. So just as a point of reference. There's lots of suppliers out there for CNC plasma tables and a lot of videos on how to build one of your own. It's not rocket science, but I've been happy with the Langmar systems. This plasma table, just FYI, I think is now $27 or $2,800. And there's some options you need, want to get for it, like the torch height control which controls the height of the torch as it's cutting and adjusted as necessary. So I think that's a valuable accessory to have. And the machine torch, like I said, a machine torch. So with those options, I think it's, you know, it's probably $3,500 or something like that. So not ridiculous. Um, it's, a, it's a nicely built machine, so I have no, no complaints about that. But if you add the price of the machine, plus the air system, plus the, the material handling, it's a much bigger investment than the machine looks like by itself. And in fact, almost three times uh, the cost of the machine itself. So uh, if you're looking at a CNC plasma table and expect to th spend three or $4,000 on it, add in another three or $4,000 for your air and material handling you know needs if you don't already have something set up for that so any questions leave them in the comments thanks for watching subscribe and we'll see you next time